blessing for us to be able to meet on this very important day for us as Christians, disciples of Jesus, to be able to remember an event that has revolutionized you know, the faith that we have come into. Um, I have got messages from some of our pastors in our region, the Asian region, asking specifically to pray for them so that they would be able to also have Good Friday services. Uh, they are so afraid that they will be attacked. In, in some countries where Christianity is not Respected and recognized, um, they fear to meet, to be able to, you know, commemorate and remember Christ uh, who died for us. And so, in some countries there is martial law. Some countries are not are minority Christians like our own. And we hope that in our own country, as so many of our brethren and churches meet from various denominations, we hope and pray that uh, God would not just give us safety, protection, but also bring inspiration to the nations around the world that this unique event, the death of Christ, will begin to sink in when the gospel is preached. Well, we are meeting here and I thank you all for joining us today to remember and commemorate the crucifixion. And we know that it's a very important part of our worship calendar. Jesus going to the cross and how God chose to redeem us seems so contradictory. I mean, we have a victory in death. We have, you know, winning in so-called surrender. It seems to be so contradictory. And of course, Jesus himself said we must remember uh, this event, especially when we take the communion. If you remember Jesus telling his uh, disciples, do this in remembrance of me. For some reason, he wanted us to be in remembrance of such a very important event. And so today, I want us to remember the crucifixion uh, through a very unusual incident in the Old Testament that was read to us uh, from Numbers 21. The story, you know, most of us will know the story, but... Israelites, ancient Israelites, as they were setting up a nation, they had their usual pastime, the usual pastime of complaining. They constantly complained, this is not good, that's not good, it's too hot, it's too cold. That reminds me, thankfully the ACs have come on, it'll become a little cooler now. Um, complaining, 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 the ancient Israelites constantly found fault with something or the other and of course poor Moses was the brunt of it and not only have they complained about God but who are who is this man who has brought us out you know into this miserable place where we don't have food to eat this detestable food called manna and so um, God took that very seriously you know when we complain it's a sign, it's a symptom of unbelief. And for some reason, God is very sensitive about unbelief, lack of faith. If you remember Jesus, when he went to a particular town, did not do many miracles. Why? Because of unbelief, lack of faith. Jesus, God Almighty, is very sensitive about not trusting him not having faith in him. It's a serious matter with God. Now, that doesn't mean to say that we don't sometimes doubt. And hopefully as we go through the message, you know, we will come to a proper perspective 
of this right and in fact unbelief complaining not trusting god not having faith in god was where all the problems of mankind started isn't it you know go back to the garden of eden what did uh, adam and eve finally do they stopped believing in god instead they wanted to believe that snake snake <laughs> there's a lot of snakes today in the house so, right um and so uh that unbelief led to so much of problems and difficulties right of course we go back to the story when when the people told moses you know we they complained and then they were bitten by these fiery snakes as it is called uh they suddenly became very sorry and then an unusual solution god gives let me see if this is working out there you are numbers 21 i just read a portion from there where it says the lord said to moses make a snake and put it on a pole anyone who is bitten can look at it and live So Moses made a bronze snake and put it on a pole and then uh, when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake they lived very very unusual solution right i mean we keep uh, uh, wondering why would god ask for such a so, you know solution you know actually god was using a practice in the near east in that time that people actually did cultures and nations and peoples did as a solution to problems god was using a practice of the culture around the nations of that time you know in the ancient world there was this practice that a person who's afflicted by an by an object if it is something that has caused a problem can be cured or delivered by an image of that same object you know there was no medical science at that time so they uh, resorted to this particular practice if a scorpion bit you or, or if uh, there was a particular problem some kind of an image of that problem is used to apparently bring uh, relief from that from the difficulty they were facing um you know it was there's another place where this takes place uh right there in our own scriptures where god uses this practice right uh, or or you could see now i'm i'll show you a practice that actually took place and is recorded for us in the book of um uh samuel first samuel but let me just give you the the context there and many of you will remember the story about how the philistines attacked the nation the ancient nation of israel and this captured the ark of the covenant you remember the ark of the covenant right uh, and that was very very sacred and holy for the israelites they captured the ark of the covenant and these people brought it to their temple and put it in the temple of dagon dagon the god you know whatever um, deity that was once they put that ark there next morning when people came if, if you remember the ark was <laughs> i mean sorry the the uh, statue was broken and fallen on its face in front of the ark that's that uh, that's an interesting picture isn't it the, the statue that they worshiped fell down and was as though in worshiping the ark you know, the presence of Yahweh the true god um and of course uh, along with that people were afflicted they had all kinds of strange things happening let me just uh, pick up part of that in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 5 notice it says then the lord's heavy hands struck the people of Ashdod and the nearby villages with a plague of tumors strange isn't it i mean uh, some kind of uh, bodily tumor started breaking out amongst the people and they were all afflicted and in tremendous pain what was
was the solution what was the practice of that culture you would be very interested to notice what they did as a solution to this problem they consulted their own priests they consulted their own uh, you know religious authorities and this is what they said and let me show you that in in chapter 6 and verse 4 it says and they were told since the plague has struck both you and your five rulers because the ark was moved amongst various rulers in that particular land make five gold tumors <laughs> that strange i don't know how a tumor would look like but make five gold tumors and five gold rats i am presuming this was the bubonic plague caused by rats in the land maybe was infested by rats and that brought the the the, the plague of, of tumors right just like those that have ravaged your land make these things to show honor to the god of israel <laughs> interesting perhaps then he will stop afflicting you your gods and your land so you see that was a culture at that time the practice of that time what is the lesson for us in this particular situation right because we would wonder why would god use their practice to bring a vital aspect about who he is and that is very important for us to understand god used this practice or this symbolism of that culture of that time to show his supremacy over them over these gods over nature over creation you see he wanted to help people recognize his sovereignty over everything over every created order he was not endorsing idol worship because if you remember moses was told let them just look at the bronze statue uh, the snake right he was not endorsing idolatry he was using a practice of that time to show his sovereignty over whatever practice they had you remember moses was what was moses told when he was supposed to go to a pharaoh take the staff in your hand and it will become a snake and you remember what pharaoh did he called his magicians and his religious whoever and they also were able to bring about this you know so called uh, strange event of snakes what did moses snake do swallowed those snakes sunday school lesson for all our children swallowed those snakes what does that mean what what does it picture you see it pictures god's sovereignty over every created order and creation you see god uses these pagan rituals or practices to fulfill his purpose and that reminds me of that video he could use a horrible instrument of death the cross by the way this cross looks so beautiful uh he could use that for his own purpose that's the sovereignty of god that's the power of god right something to think about for all of us especially some of us you know feel that uh, can you just switch that off I'm sorry i forgot to switch on my phone um you know some of us might think that oh and we used to say this in the past christmas is pagan why because it is borrowed from pagan religions there are people who say the very word easter is pagan because it symbolizes another god right some people say the trinity is pagan why because it was borrowed from another religion now can you recognize god can still borrow something from a pagan religion and bring a vital lesson not only for us but for so called pagan practices 
and show his power and sovereignty in the world to all peoples and that's a lesson that i feel we can learn but let's go back to our story what was our story well the serpent was biting people and uh moses was told put a snake on the pole right um and uh became a became a symbol of healing and protection no isn't that interesting you know how the snake can camouflage into becoming once deception but another time a symbol of so called healing right apparently in greek mythology the god of healing as as clepius and cordius were depicted as a snake the rod you must have heard the medical fraternity will know that the rod of aclepius a staff entwined by a snake is still a symbol for medicine and healing today i think i have a picture there now i, I don't know do we in uh, india still use any one of these uh, we don't use them uh, is, is that right a phd lady speaking as well <laughs> and of course we have a doctor there but uh, i i saw i've sometimes seen this uh, symbol right Uh, but it, it 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 comes from greek mythology but god can use these so called symbols or practices uh to show his power you see people worshiped these symbols of nature they worshiped uh creatures right but god using these could show that he can, he controls nature he controls every created order in the world and he can use it for his own redeeming purposes and so this is the story behind what happens in numbers 21 with the snake and the pole uh unfortunately these people the, the ancient israelites preserved this this pole with the bronze snake and later started worshiping it of course that's another story we want Still, they, 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 you know god never intended for that but they started doing that but jesus christ in the new testament uses this symbol and we have just read in the book of john chapter 3 he uses this symbol uh and uh, uh helps us to understand something very powerful uh seems a bit shocking for us that jesus christ himself uses this symbol for the crucifixion right and i and i'm borrowing here some thoughts from a catholic theologian who looked at this and uh, i i'm just taking some of his words here to be able to bring this uh, these thoughts to all of us you see when moses was told tell the israelites to look at the fiery serpent what were they looking at when they lifted up their eyes and saw those fiery snakes Uh, that bit them and brought so much of pain what were they looking at they were looking at something that was so fearful obviously you'd be fearful right snakes running around the camp and biting it's very fearful i mean the very sight of a snake is uh, for me it's kind of i i i can recoil <laughs> i find it very difficult to you know go go close it's very fearful and of course they were looking at something that caused so much of pain so much of uh, uh you know and and death it it was causing a lot of suffering but perhaps god was trying to establish a connection as they were looking at the snake right god wanted them to make a connection my okay between the pain the consequence the moral failure to trust god as they were looking at that snake they were hopefully trying to understand that they were suffering because of their own failure to trust god and so god by forcing them to look on that fiery snake was asking them to acknowledge the fear and the failure to face their fear not to deny it you see 
not to ignore it he did not say to worship it but to look so that they would make the connection the connection between fear death and their lack of trust in the god that had brought them out of the land of egypt and then jesus christ takes this and makes the shocking comparison right and he says going into the third chapter of john and as moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness so the son of man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life that's the connection jesus makes and the question we have to ask is what do we see when we look at jesus on the cross when the son of man is lifted up on the cross what is it that we are supposed to see just as the israelites were supposed to see something when they saw the snake jesus says when the son of man is lifted up he says i mean we are supposed to look at it what is it that we see now before we come to that and of course the video showed so much of uh, what we should really see but if you remember the the events that took place before the crucifixion of jesus he was betrayed by his disciples right i should say disciples because he was betrayed and he was even denied by his disciples he was arrested taken to pilate herod the the so called king of uh, judea at that time and then he was taken to the high priest who was it Caiaphas yes and uh, and that reminds me of what Pravin was saying the other day representation of political leadership and representation of religious leadership and when they come together it's a deadly combination it's a deadly combination and let's be reminded of uh, my dear brothers and sisters it's happening in the world happening in the world the right and the left or rather the right and the religious are coming together religious leaders and political leaders are coming together deadly combination and may we pray that we will not be troubled by this unholy alliance that is not just having coming in some parts of the world but in many many parts of the world right and so jesus uh before these so called authorities false testimonies made against him false uh, you know a charges brought against him and ultimately condemned to death he was handed over to the guards and there it was free for all they the soldiers the people who wielded power because they had a sword and today they have a gun and they think they have all the power in the world they blindfolded him they spat upon him they made fun of him they slapped him and they mocked him and while they were punching him they said prophesy such an extent that it is hard to even imagine how human beings can behave the way they do and while he was going through all all of this somewhere he probably heard a denial peter was probably close by and he was asked did you not be with this man and remember what he said I don't know this man. Maybe Jesus heard that. And can you imagine how much it would have hurt him? His own chief disciple denying him not once, not twice, three times. Three times. Whipped, flogged, till he lay bleeding. Crown of thorns thrust into his skull. 
and then made to carry his cross till he was helped by Simon from Cyrene and taken to a place called Golgotha where they nailed him to the cross lifted up for all to see what do we see when we see Jesus on the cross first and foremost we see the dreaded cross right? the instrument of torture and death used by the Romans right fear grips anyone who would look at the cross at that time because that was the chosen instrument by the Roman authorities to bring maximum pain and suffering on those who defied their so called authority it was designed in such a way where the pain could last for hours or even days maximum and the word excruciating comes from the cross excruciating pain what do we see when we look at Jesus on the cross the brutalized mangled body of our savior what else do we see when we see Jesus on the cross we see betrayal of friends we see false accusations made against an innocent man in today's language he say a man framed for what he didn't do what do we see when we see Jesus on the cross humiliation abandonment we see extreme violence intense pain deep deep suffering and the question we have to ask is how much can a human being in a situation like that and in this moment the, the 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 you know the loneliness was so intense the mental physical psychological trauma all came together to such a degree that Jesus cries out my God my God why have you forsaken That's where we all struggle right? on so many occasions we might have wondered where are you God? as I go through my moment of trial my moment of difficulty we on many occasions I'm sure have said the same thing and Jesus said it on our behalf my God my God why have you forsaken me Ellie Wiesel a survivor of the Holocaust after he came out alive he lost all his family he said I searched for God in the north in the south in the east in the west I, don't, I can't find God he lost his faith because the suffering was so intense what do we see when we see Jesus on the cross we also see the full ugliness of sin its manipulation, its offensiveness, its repulsiveness. We see evil in its full force. In the face of Jesus, we see the damage that sin does to the creation, to humankind. And mind you, my dear brothers and sisters, as we look at Jesus on the cross, we look at our own fallenness isn't it our own sinfulness we stand on the same ground of those soldiers who were had tortured him and now putting him to death we stand on the same ground of those murderous religious authorities and I remember what Praveen said in his sermon we unfortunately carry the flag the cross on the flag rather than on our shoulders would have done the same thing that the religious authorities did and the soldiers did we see people screaming for the blood of Jesus can you and I identify us 
that same position when we see Jesus on the cross we see all of this but there is much more we need to see just as the Israelites needed to see something more on in the snake the bronze snake when we see Jesus on the cross we see immeasurable love the love of Jesus absorbing the full force of evil into himself when we see Jesus on the cross we are supposed to see the love that took, took the full force of the blow of sinfulness for us because the apostle said God died while we were still sinners we were responsible for his death and as he lay dying Jesus we must see that he was also bringing healing to all humanity a healing immortalized by the words of Jesus from the cross father forgive them father forgive them for they know not what they do while we see the brutality of sin we must also see the healing that is beginning to take place and covering all of humanity and as he was praying that prayer to the father Jesus was also defeating the full force of violence and death in his person he was bringing divinity and humanity together by defeating evil in his humanity and that is why the apostle tells us in Colossians 2 and having disarmed the powers and authorities he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross and so brethren Jesus Christ by allowing humanity to brutalize him with violence he was neutralizing that violence making it a spent force without having power anymore the instrument of death like we heard in the in the video like the fiery snake on the pole was becoming a symbol of healing redemption restoration you see the power of God he can take something so bad he can take something so pagan in his sovereignty can show us the symbol of love peace and ultimate salvation so today brethren as we see Jesus on the cross look and see the brutality of sin look and see of our own sinfulness our own guilt our own fallenness look and see also the healing that is available to us the assurance that Jesus has healed us and will see us through let us look at Jesus and let us believe because Jesus himself has said everyone who sees the son and believes in him will have eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day that my brethren is our only sure hope a hope that no one can take away a hope that you can be absolutely sure of and may God give us the strength the faith to look at Jesus and believe and as we end may this video song as we play it inspire us to continue 